Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. And I'm my child. And thank you for joining us. I hope you're doing all right. My child, how are you? How are things in the world of the little Tokyo and thereabouts? Uh, I don't know. Doing well. Nothing really too interesting happening here. Uh... Have you added more Apparently to your uh, your collection over there? I mean, oh, behind me, no, nothing yeah. at all. No, okay. not, not, not on my side. Although, uh, I guess since the last time, there have been a couple of Gundams added on the Gundam side. Okay, tell me about the Gundams. Always been a in a Gundam building frenzy, I guess. Going through the backlog, right? it's a couple. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh-huh. A, there's a Wing Zero here that's got wings with two guns. It's all fancy looking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She did a um her idol. I don't yeah, I think the idol Zaku was also new. It's like a pink Zaku with yeah. with some stuff on it. So that's pretty cool. And then a couple from the new series, Witch of Mercury. Uh the the regular one and one is in like a neon pink and black colorway, which is cool. So she so she's been building them and you also you also paint those, right? Not these. Oh. Uh you could, but like there's stickers and some like Mm. trim that you add to it that mm-hmm. she added to it with like a marker but or that uh, brush maybe but that comes in the kit or uh, no no you just kind of add her those. own set of tools yeah oh, that's good is that something she's been interested you know even before oh think? yeah well way before probably since before i knew her okay uh to the uninitiated uh gundams are like transformers or that, no, they don't transform. They're just giant robots. I see. Think they're just like they've just always been robots. Yes. Okay. Think of Think, it like Evangelion or other. It's Gundam's like the the progenitor of all mech anime. Mm, okay. Um, I mean, it's cool. It's uh, you know, it's a nice, it's a pretty cool um, hobby, and and uh, I don't know, just it's a cartoon though, right? I'm sorry. Yes. An animated series. Yes, it's it's a Japanese cartoon, if you will. Right. right. Since the eighties, mm. I think. Okay. Um. Cool. Well, I had no idea. I mean, maybe she'll join John. Maybe Kanara. Maybe they have a little building party or something. And. Um, I mean, what? Seventy nine was 79? the first Gundam series. Wow. Nineteen seventy nine. Long time. Long time. Yeah, I didn't realize. Way, um, but, way before our time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. But uh, they'll live on forever, as uh, as you can see the showcase right there. So, nice. Yeah, I mean, the new series is pretty popular, so. And Gundams in general have been selling like crazy recently, or since the pandemic. Yeah. Where where has she been getting their, uh, you know, their, her Gundams from, typically? Um, A few from, like, cons, AX, Comic-Con. Mm-hmm. A few online from the premium gun premium bandai website mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The actual their official website okay nice okay well hope uh hope the collection grows i mean i don't know i, I know oh, it will i know uh uh with john and carmen you know there's always a, a discussion between uh, you know where they where they place all those and where, where they find space for all of it but um you mean lack thereof <laughs> the lack thereof right exactly so I don't know. I hope you guys work it out too. But it looks like a good collection uh, so far. Looks pretty good. Oh yeah, there's plenty of space for more. Yeah, is uh, is the is the space for you over there kind of shaping up already? Like it's uh, you know, you kind of got things in place and. Uh, in my case, no. Well, I, I mean, I just have not bought anything. Or I mean, just in the apartment in general. I mean, like you're, you know, have you settled in and. <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I got my this desk. This is like one of the first things I did when I moved here. Mm-hmm. It's an L shape because space. Yeah, yeah. Third monitor, all that. But more recently, as in tomorrow, our couch is scheduled to arrive. Okay, all right. And I had no idea you were couchless. So yeah, since what, February. What kind of what kind of couch are you uh, you know looking forward to? It's a small green couch from IKEA. It's like mm-hmm. a sixty-five inch or something like that. It's like a love seat, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that it fits in between 
our table and these glass cases. Okay. It's, I imagine it, it okay. yeah, sit across where that, that TV console is, right? The media console. Yes, oh, that yeah. is correct. All right. Hopefully then you'll have more than one chair and you can have uh, some people over. We have two chairs now. Oh, one, one. Yes, that's, yes, yes. That's a hundred percent improvement. Yeah. Indeed. That, and then with the doubling of seatage in the couch, it's another hundred percent. It's exponential. Absolutely. <laughs> Every time, you know, as they say, double it and then give it to the next person. Double it again. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, you know, I, I uh, still haven't stopped by, so I don't know. One day I got to, I gotta um, impose myself in that space. So, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a lot easier once this couch is here. Okay. Well, it looks like it's shaping up. So, nice. Um, Honestly, cool. mm -hmm. well, technically, I mean, there's still a lot of junk that we don't know what to do with. But mm. the uh, with the couch, the entire floor plan that we had originally planned uh -huh. is will be complete. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Um, it looks good so far. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, nice place. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Anywhere else? Uh, anything you've been up? Anything else you've been up to? Anywhere you visited or seen or looking forward to? Um, visited? No. I've gone into a, recently gone to a hobby. Yeah. Ish of building keyboards. Me oh, like custom keyboards? Uh, yeah, keyboards mechanical mother with pieces. With yeah. The switches and the keycaps and stuff. Yep. Oh, okay. Nice. Like I, I'm currently using the. This is the only one I've built so far. Mm -hmm. But I. I have parts for another one that I haven't started yet, mm. uh, but I'm using a 65% degree, 65% layout. It's oh, wow. terrible. Wait, why is it terrible? It's pretty compact. Yeah. Oh, you need it a number is. pad. It's yeah. so small. I need a yeah. number pad, honestly. Yeah. So the next one I'm going to build has to be full size. Like, okay, Mr. But, Accountant with your key pad. <laughs> then again, I don't work from home anymore, so maybe I don't need one. <laughs> I don't know. I still find the need for a keypad myself, although... You know, and the way the keyboard's laid out, obviously it shifts the, the you know, the the keyboard, you know, the letters to, like, off to the side. Like, it's kind of a skew for me. Oh, um, wait, what do you mean? I don't know. Like, when I place my keyboard, you know, I, I don't know, my keys are always to the... Off-centered. Yeah, oh. a little off-center, you know. No, I center the key part and then just deal with the key, the numpad on oh. its own. Okay. Is there a particular brand or something that you're uh, getting that from or working with? Um, for the new one or the one I built? Uh, the one you built. This one key is from Keychron. Mm -hmm. They're pretty, according to my friend, they're pretty good for their, they're a good beginner kit to build from. And they're very, you get a lot for what you pay for with Keychron from what I've heard. Mm. So that's cool. Like this that's... keyboard here is technically, it could be for Mac or Windows. I mean, any keyboard. could. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, True. <laughs> But I mean, like in terms but of as far as the keycaps, right? And the keycaps, kind of, and you don't have to reprogram it. If yeah. you, you just sit, sit, hit a switch, and then it'll go to the the mm -hmm. Mac layout. Instead. Right. Right. Well, okay. I mean, it's not terribly different, but yes, it's a it's a good convenience, you know. Yeah. Um, to switch between between the two, so that's good. Um, and then, what kind of color switches are you using on those? Uh, these are tactile silence. They're Gateron Brown. Browns. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The browns are usually more silent, right? And, um, yeah. Although for the next build, because I do have to make one for my, for my work, because that laptop or that keyboard sucks. Mm, okay. And they'll it's let a membrane you bring, and it's, and they'll let you bring, I don't care. Okay. Yeah. They probably will. I've seen people with other, with not, uh, not county issued keyboards. So it should okay. be fine. All right. But cool. yeah, because it's a stupid, the membrane, low profile keyboard. Right. Just the one that comes with the computer, you know, and uh, yeah, it's not I'd great. be OK if it wasn't low profile. I wouldn't be as upset, but mm -hmm. I hate the low profile one. Mm. Not a lot of travel, just kind of mushy and just not. Yeah. Not very responsive. So, well, then they'll probably expect you to do a lot more work then. Eh, you better <laughs> they <already> do. <laughs> they always be do. You know, um, always more. Or you type you you expand your productivity by uh, in, by typing in certain websites and uh, certain <laughs> URLs and yeah know. exactly so make the county proud so oh all the Reddit <laughs> I've read it all oh man okay well good glad you're uh, glad glad you're getting into that yeah keyboards are mechanical keyboards are pretty 
Depombi as well that people can get. It kind of is. I didn't realize. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, no, it, it's no. crazy. Yeah. Just just as uh, much as uh, Gundams and other building, you know, kind of things. I mean, it has its own community, its own, yeah, um, yeah. rabbit hole that you it's, can just really. I thought it would be simpler than building a computer. I mean, mm. in some ways it is, but it in other be. ways it's it's just as, like, as a, a, yeah, it's very. Yeah. It can be simple, but it also totally uh, doesn't have to be. Um, it can it can be a lot more involved. People can like solder their own stuff uh, on there, and yeah, uh, yeah, it's pretty complicated, um, but enjoyable nevertheless. Nice tinker toy, too. and it's Definitely. usable, right? Like you, you actually something you actually use. Um, yeah, and this is quite as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm typing. I can type as much as I want. You yeah. probably don't hear it all. Even now. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great. Yeah, I'm typing so, cool. as we speak. Nice. All right. Well, yeah, you I go enjoy, finally... enjoy your Reddit. Exactly. <laughs> now you'll never know. <laughs> Put it on oh. the same monitor as where the camera is, and I'm just yep. looking at the mo- I'm just looking exactly. at the camera. Exactly. You know, just innocently just looking. Yeah, no one would be the yeah. wiser. So that's good. As I type furiously about how, <laughs> how much this, uh, this venture is costing. <laughs> Well, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Very cool. Um, yeah, we've it's been a while. Uh, so I just wanted to, you know, just catch up here and what's going on. Uh, sounds like you've been having fun and looking forward to some good things. Um, I just wanted to kind of give a rundown of uh, some of the places that I visited um, and uh, and eaten. Apparently, I've been been eating a lot, and uh, so I just want to see nice. where, where that's been. <laughs> I mean, uh, one of the first things I'm going to mention is, um, play, uh, you know, something that we've done together. We were um, celebrating uh, John's birthday um, at, uh, at Aiken Sushi all the way in, mm. in Northridge, for God's sake. I mean, we could have gone literally anywhere else, but <laughs> <laughs> to go oh, all wow. the way. Well, I mean, no one is out. That's like the most out of the way place. And uh, that's where they all brought us. So, I mean. Look, that was his choice. Okay, What's but the he, problem? It's uh, his birthday. Yes, but it was uh, very much out of the way of everyone else. Oh, speaking of, I forgot to wish him a happy birthday. It's already been sorry the seventeenth. Nah, don't worry about it. He, he's, he's we probably, did a dinner. We did a dinner. I mean, that's all he needed to know. So, <laughs> um, it's fine, and he's probably forgotten because he'll be on his way um out soon to the uh, overseas thing. I don't know, whatever. Um, he's forgotten all about us, so that's uh, that's fine. As he should. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, we were over at Aiken, and uh, that's all you can eat sushi. It's a spot that we've um, enjoyed and frequented. Um, formerly uh, Aburi, and uh, mm-hmm. right, they were out in Pas- they're out in Pasadena. They have uh, locations in um, Cerritos and uh, Long Beach, and and uh, now Northridge. I, I wanted to say I added no, uh, I said Long Beach there because actually technically, um, I think I forgot who mentioned the story, but like it was originally a Long Beach thing, right? And then um, what I understand is that management kind of moved out to expand to places like uh, Northridge and Pasadena and those kinds of things. But so Aburi was still um, uh, was still there in Long Beach, but then now they made an announcement actually very recently, like in the last few weeks that management, original management's coming back. And so they're now oh. renaming, uh, updating the name to ICANN and they're bringing the same menu from Northridge out to Long Beach. <laughs> oh, wow. So now we all have like a regional ICANN that we can all go to. <laughs> yeah. You know? I guess so. We and got, we'll go together in spirit. That That's right. So, yeah. So I can all around. So, um, a good a good sushi i mean i mean i think every time we visited we've always had um a good experience good selection of sushi um we opted for the premium um selection which included things like um is it uni and yes i don't know soft the crab rolls or something i don't know soft shell oh, crab soft shell crab yeah. but that's not a that's not one of their premium items it's not oh man no okay. The premium uh, items were the uni, the mm. uh, I think it was salmon toro, mm. uh, and then there was another. There were four total. Oysters are one of them. Oh man, okay. And then there was another. I think it was another fatty cut of of fish of some kind. Mm. 
Okay. Well, you lo- you remember more than I do. I just remember like, oh, the premium miners are here. Just start eating, eat, eat, eat. And then, <laughs> but um, yeah, one of each only. Yep, exactly. But um, no, it was good. It was a uh, it was a nice nice time. Good uh, good company and everything. So, um, yeah. I mean, John, you'll never hear this, but you know, I guess happy Kwanzaa and all that. Yeah. Uh, belated least not be done by yet, a few days. So. Yep. Exactly. Um. So that yeah. So that was uh, one of the first things that you know we all got to join in together now moving on um now i have this section uh just dedicated to um what i call the burger roundup because uh, these are all burgers now so in the last i don't know it's been a few weeks already but i've had my share of visiting several places um places that um i don't know have been on my mind on my lists and I don't know, things that I've come across that I've wanted to visit. Um, I'll just kind of go through them uh, briefly. Um, some maybe more than others, but uh, the first one I'm talking about here is Mo Better Burgers in Hawthorne. If you just need a good burger, um, nice uh, small spot out in Hawthorne, that's uh, that's where you want to go. You just got a nice, good like burger stand type burger. Got a, a patty mm-hmm. with, you know, lettuce tomato onion cheese you know just just a nice kind of stand kind of regular uh burger you would think of uh they got it so um i don't know there's a lot of uh definitely no shortage of burgers in la i mean but um this one was worth uh mentioning um the next one i've mentioned before uh in uh, redondo beach is uh, standing room so standing room is a, a burger spot that's nestled inside a liquor store and uh, they serve up a pretty, um, pretty good variety of different burgers. They have different price ranges and like different ingredients. A lot of, uh, I'd say, Asian leaning inspired type uh, flavors there. Um, but uh, they had a they had a great um, great selection. And I'm I know I I do uh, do want to keep kind of visiting a few more times just to kind of get more of that menu. I think the last, if I'm looking right last one I had was this, um, item called the Napoleon. So it's a burger. So you'll still have your, you know, your meat, your hamburger patty, but it also includes short rib, bacon, uh, spring mix, caramelized onion, American cheddar, smoked Gouda, um, some truffle and, uh, fried egg, <laughs> carne, aioli and tomato jam. I mean, it's such a loaded, this is one, I think one of the higher end, like kind of the higher tier items. Uh, price wise and obviously like it just jammed with all these different ingredients but um it was a sizable burger and it was a good bite i mean it's um it's it was something else so i i really enjoyed it if you look through their menu um you can see all the different uh, items that they have not just burgers they have sandwiches and different plates and all that so it's a nice selection to to look through that i think um anyone would enjoy um Additionally, um, moving out to Long Beach, uh, there is a, uh, a restaurant, you know, I'll just say that, um, being close to Long Beach, uh, and exploring that area a little more, I've noticed that there are, I think in my mind that stands out are two things, uh, pizza and brunch. So, um, as far as, I guess so. But I just haven't uh, really scratched that. I mean, donuts, you're right. They're just kind of uh, ubiquitous, right? And all the the pink boxes, for sure. Yeah. (laughs) But but I think as far as like maybe restaurant, you know, restaurant fare, that that I think it comes to pizza Uh and brunch, at at least for me. Um, So this uh, one spot in particular is called uh, Claire's at the Museum. And uh, it's a breakfast and lunch spot that is part right like right next to is part of a um, Long Beach Museum of Art I want to say it's it's really nice it's by the beach it's it's kind of you can oversee kind of where the the beach is the water it's just a nice outdoor space Um, and I went out there with um, uh, some good friends of mine and I just uh, got some very um, what's the word constructive uh, helpful feedback and would just say that they are good friends there's no other qualification no other no 
lesser, whatever. They're just good friends. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> um, I so see. We, everyone we, who's not there is not a good friend. <laughs> you had to have been there. I, I see. <sighs> I, uh, it was only a matter of time. All and right, therefore, further digging the hole. So that's... <laughs> Um, we'll get some feedback, I'm sure, uh, very shortly. Um, <laughs> but Claire's by the museum is very decent, uh, very nice, um, spot in both views and food. And there are many things that we had, but you know, one of those items was a, uh, was a burger, just a nice thick patty. I also had a, um, a breakfast burrito as well, like in addition. Um, so that was, um, that was a lot, but, um, I thought the burger kind of uh, stood out from uh, from what I had, so that was that was nice. Um, also in Long Beach, we have um, this spot called the Croft, and the Croft is actually known for uh, poutine, uh, so that's kind of loaded fries, fries um, topped with like gravy and cheese curds, typically. But the Croft kind of takes it up to next level. They kind of load it with other types of ingredients. Um, just a whole variety of things, but uh, my visit there was for their burger. They have a double um, kind of Wagyu smash burger style uh, burger. Yeah. So you have the burger, you have caramelized onions, you have like cheese on there, just kind of a relatively simple burger, um, but it's a good offering. I mean, it's a decent offering from a place that we typically know for poutine. Um, they are located in uh, the Long Beach Exchange, which is the kind of big shopping center out there in the Long Beach hangar, um, which is kind of a small, kind of a sizable food court um, in there with many other uh, great selections of, um, of food to try. Uh, but the Croft is, you know, one place definitely you should, you should uh, try out. Um, moving on, we have another spot called Louis uh, Burgers 3, I guess. I don't really know how to say it. Is it? Louis Burger the Third? Is it? Lou, I don't know, <laughs> but I, I, <laughs> but it's that's what it is. Okay, I mean that's um, look it up and you decide for yourself. But uh, mm -hmm. this is one of your kind of old school kind of burger spots, uh, akin to like your gyms and your your Tams and you know you know just kind of kind of counter serve style, uh, just burgers, fries, chili cheese fries. You know, maybe some Mexican fare in there as well. You know, just a whole variety of things. Um, but you would go there certainly for a good burger and also the chili cheese fries. I think for like, from all these like, again, burger stand style burgers or whatever. I don't know. This one was quite good. I mean, um, just the overall packaging, the bite, even the mm. bun was like, it just felt a little different, but it was like particularly nice. Um, to the kind of um, eat, um, but uh, the chili cheese fries also really stood out. Like nice bed of fries with the chili, and then you they top it with like shredded, you know, cheese. But you know, um, as the uh, because of the heat of the chili, it it just melts the cheese as you kind of go through it and eat through it. So I don't know. It's kind of a little satisfying to both see and to to taste so but i don't know i i feel like from all these spots uh this one was particularly interesting to try um uh similarly there's another spot not too far called golden burger just another great burger stand similar kind of menu you got burgers fries chili cheese fries you know those that whole that whole deal um also uh in long beach you have um Dave's Burgers and Dave's Burgers is just a small kind of burger shack uh, that's uh, in shares space with a gas station. So um, not inside. It's got its own like space, but like on the same lot. But um, they they also make a good um, kind of burger and they have a particular signature burger called a, a cubby burger, which is a burger, but also with uh, two um I don't know. Actually, it's, it, yeah, two halved hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. It's uh, it's kind of interesting. And it's actually, a first level burger. I think so. Um, 
And so I think it works, you know, it, it is, it seems a bit, uh, you know, indulgent and excessive, but, uh, the cubby burger works. The cubby burger comes with like one patty, um, but you can add another one easily. Um, but I just had the, the one, the one, and, um, that was, that was surprisingly good. I mean, like it's a solid burger, the burger on its own, like it's a good burger. Um, so something you could just have on its own, but the cubby burger, I think is, you know, something uh, nice to try as well. So I don't know, but, um, from there, That's good. yeah, I, I think, um, we're down here again. Let's, uh, let's <laughs> I'm looking it. at it now. Good. Good. Yeah. I'm into it. <laughs> um, now moving all the way up, uh, traveling up north to Pasadena, uh, was a pop-up called Haps Burgers. And, um, they're, you know, kind of, uh, in the realm of, uh, the many, uh, smash burger fairs that we've, uh, we've come to know and love. And they're another addition to that rotation. Uh, they offer okay. a simple Joe, which is just meat and cheese and, uh, on a bun and, um, you can get a single, double, or triple, and uh, they also have fried tots. So just in case nice. you're into that, um, they've they've got that. So that's good. So they they popped up at uh, in the burger. I uh, know. Maybe you'll have uh, to maybe you have to construct that yourself. But I see. Yeah. Um, but they um, they popped up at uh, Stone Brewery in Pasadena. So it's this brewery just right by the uh, the Gold Line. So it's a nice, pretty cool area hmm. over there. Yeah across from uh, that area central park that they have so it's it's a good uh, just busy spot um serving good burgers now one of the last items in this burger roundup that i want to mention is this uh, spot called chowder barge <laughs> and um i uh seen this spot on and off you know social media other people i follow whatever but um there was also an article i think that i'd come across uh, highlighting this place. This is, uh, I think, considered one of LA's, I don't know if LA City proper or LA County, but one of LA's only floating restaurants. And uh -huh. uh, down in the city of Wilmington, like near the ports, near the water, uh, you'll find this restaurant floating on the water by the docks. And um, you go inside and you step back in time, kind of this old seafare, kind of dimly lit, kind of yeah old school kind of uh uh restaurant that serves seafood uh clam chowder and um and burgers and a few other things but um one item in particular that stands out that i think people will catch people's attention is uh the chowder burger so it's um a marriage between a burger that is covered and doused in Clam chowder. <laughs> so it's, oh, um, yeah. So you take, it's like literally you have a bowl, you have the burger, and then you just kind of ladle the clam chowder and fill up the bowl. It's quite interesting. Uh, you think it would like be super messy and maybe like disintegrate the burger, but I don't know. It, nah, it, it looks good. What do you mean? It actually is. It is quite good. The clam chowder itself is actually great. It's nice and herby. It's just, uh, it's not too thick. It's just, it's okay. nice. Um, and then you have the burger. The burger itself, I think alone would be decent. Um, and then you pair them together and it's like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like something I never knew I, I needed to try, but there it is. And it's got um, fries in it too. Well, in those, the chowder? so that I think what you're looking at is probably what they call the double chowder burger, which includes, which in there I think it's fried clams. Oh, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I'm in. That exactly. So good. It 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 actually is. I think the only thing is that you know I happen to go around you know a typical lunchtime, so it took a little while to get a seat. Mm. Um, and I think they were kind of short staffed. Uh, so there's a lot of running around and yeah, just um. And big parties too, and and all that. But um, of course, well, if you get a chance, it's like it's real good, and um, it it is Where worth the hell's visit. Well, <laughs> ah, I see. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not too far. Um, my neck of the woods. So, but but yeah, it's kind of a unsuspecting spot. Um, probably wouldn't visit. You wouldn't like go there. You wouldn't uh, stop by there like normally. Um, but it's it's a cool spot. And again, like while you're waiting, kind of walk 
uh, along the docks, kind of check out some, you know, scenery out there. It's pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, a chowder covered burger, uh, something to add to your list of things to try. <laughs> um, Definitely. Now, as far as uh, non-burgers go, but we know that burgers are a foundational part of the food group, but um, we move on to other uh, m- other foods, including uh, pizza. So one other spot to mention is Quarter Sheets in Echo Park, and um, we visited there with uh, John and Tiffany Tran, and we were um, greeted by, I don't know, a good selection of pan-style pizza. Particularly, I think John's been kind of on that kick ever since we visited that. Um, we had that Detroit style pizza in uh, in Austin. Um, he's been kind of looking for kind of that style. Um, I told him that this would be a great place to try. It's um, it is pan style. It is kind of Detroit style. Uh, they might deviate here and there, but like it's more or less like what you'd expect. So nice, yeah. So there were different types we had. Um, including, you know, pepperoni. And there's also, they have like thinner slices and, uh, they also rotate a uh, certain, uh, you know, flavor every now and then they sometimes do collabs with, um, with other restaurants. And, um, but I think their pizza is just among some of the you know, tastiest that you'll, that you'll have. And it's a very interesting pairing. You have this kind of duo, you know, they have the pizza and then you also have, uh, these incredible desserts, uh, these cakes, um, that are, uh, just really well-made, very thoughtfully made, very well created and, uh, just overall just super delicious, um, as well. So, yeah, I mean, using, um, you know, dough to make bread or to make cakes either way, it's, uh, it's like a winner, you know, I don't think you can go wrong. So that's quarter sheets out in Echo Park. Um, but then traveling back down to uh, the South Bay uh, in Torrance, we have um, New York Deli, which is a Jewish style deli uh, akin to like Langer's or like Brent's. So you have that, you know, that the pastrami, you know, that stacked high on rye bread, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. So uh, in my case, I had a, you know, pastrami Reuben and also a matzo ball soup. The pastrami, the sandwich itself would have been fine, you know, but, you know, I added the matzo ball soup, right? And usually, yeah, I, I, I don't know, like, I don't have that too often, but I don't know how, what you would picture matzo ball soup to, to be. Usually it's like smaller, um, like balls in the soup, right, mm-hmm. uh, of the matzo. But this was a big, just one large oh, yeah. matzo That's ball in the bowl. Like, it just took up, like most of the space. Oh, yeah. Okay. That big. Okay. <laughs> no, it was big. It was big. So, um, but they were both very good. Um, so yeah, I mean, so if I, so wouldn't have to like drive all the way to, you know, a place like Langer's or whatever, even though I, I still would, um, it's good to know that there's a good selection out in, um, at New York deli in, in Torrance. So, um, and then, as we move along, we've got um, mm-hmm. we've mentioned this place, this next place called Schlap Muan. They make mm-hmm. um, they make great chicken wings with a lot of Cambodian uh, flavors. Um, they have both dry rubs and wet rubs, so um, you know a lot of Cambodian flavors that uh, you might be familiar or not. Um, you can try them at this spot, Schlap Muan. Um, they also serve up things like fried rice and garlic noodles and even like um, milk, like Thai tea as well. Um, mm. Yeah. So it's like kind of a nice, um, nice spot, you know, kind of well-rounded. <laughs> so, um, but uh, speaking of Cambodian, you know, another, another good spot out there is uh, Nam Phen uh, Noodle Shack, which is definitely a very popular spot out there as far as um, Cambodian, you know, noodles go. Uh, like noodle soup um, with beef or, you know, whatever kind of slices of meat that uh, are served. Um, but um, that's a good, uh, that's out, of course, in like that Cambodia town, you know. Um, but it's just one of the best examples, a good reliable example of getting a good kind of noodle dish out there. So, um, uh, again, if you um, 
are out here and you know just you want to try something out this would be a good place um and then um pastries i think are always good baked goods mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh there's a kind of a mexican artisan bakery called gusto bread in long beach and um they just make great uh just make your great pastries um they use just fresh ingredients they buy local they it's like small batch but they make great breads and pastries and things like that so um yeah that that's just another great spot to um to support and and to try out so um and uh we're almost done here um as you know uh we recently uh celebrated uh mother's day um mm -hmm. and um took my folks out to uh, Rosemead and um, we had dim sum out at a spot called Longo Seafood. Nice. And uh, that, that was uh, that was great. Um, you know, we are used to, uh, you know, our, our usuals um, like Hargau and Shumai and all those, all those things. Uh, Longo is a great spot. It is a little, uh, on the pricier side, as far as dim sum goes, usually, you know, you might probably expect like three to five dollars for, for a dish. Whereas this place is maybe closer to, I don't know, four to seven maybe, but the, but the portion sizes are larger, you know, for mm. the, for the dim sum. Um, so, and there was plenty to take home as well from what we ordered, but there was a, a good dish, a signature dish that, um, I, I had seen called, uh, the lobster noodles. And so it's like this large plate, it's like huge. And it's, as the name implies, it's like, it's just a bed of noodles. And then they, you know, they chop up the lobster pieces and they throw it oh, in Okay, there. pieces. Yeah. It would be nice. <laughs> you just had a whole lobster. lobster. Just like, yeah. <laughs> I right, wouldn't have been very impressed. You never know. But um, that was a, that was a good dish. I mean, the lobster itself, the noodles, I mean, like it was just a, it was a great um, time. So, and, and the place itself looked almost um almost imperial i think it like i think a lot of these obviously you see a lot of these places like even like capital seafood or whatever the dim sum these large banquet hall style kind of places mm -hmm. big round tables maybe some lighting some hanging off the ceilings chandelier type kind of things um in this case they also had like these chairs that were covered in like this kind of red velvety kind of material mm -hmm. i don't know it just it just felt a little uh, elevated i think um but it was a it was a nice experience, you know. Um, so, okay. yeah, that that's just one of the so many dim sum places, right, in the SGV. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's just another one to just add on there if you if you're so uh, so inclined. Um, nice. And then uh, <laughs> there's still we still got la something else here. Lastly, we've uh, recently I visited. Um, this event, I went down to this event called the Long Beach Barbecue Festival. Um, it's the first, um, it's like kind of the, the inaugural event, hopefully of an annual thing, um, hosted by um, a, a restaurant called Axiom Kitchen, which is kind of, uh, kind of recently got a good amount of uh, notoriety and, and um, recognition uh, yeah, in, the, in the food space. So they make, Axiom makes a, uh, they make barbecue. They make, uh, yeah, they're kind of smoked meats and stuff. Um, but uh, they hosted this event and kind of invited other uh, local um, spots to participate. So they were out at uh, Trademark Brewery, and um, Trademark Brewery is a uh, is a, is sizable, um, but it can get tight as far as the space goes. There's a nice outdoor space, but you know they had like maybe five or six vendors, and and at that point, yeah, it was it was kind of getting a little tight with a uh, Lots of people, lots of long lines and things like that. Um, but uh, the event, I think, went um, fairly well. I think everyone got a good bite to eat. So uh, I only managed to hit up maybe like three of those uh, spots there, including Axiom, which they served uh, their brisket, some sausage, some burnt ends. Um, there's an The other one I visited was Brother's Keeper, and they uh, had a simple menu, but uh, I had a, a brisket sando, basically. Chop brisket nice. on like a bed of coleslaw and some pickle in there, and um, so that was that was nice and uh, good as well. And then full send barbecue, which I I hadn't um, hadn't yet heard of. I think they it sounds like they're a 
well, they must be like this kind of Filipino kind of fusion inspired, I don't know, kind of a barbecue spot. So they've got bris- uh, brisket, they got this uh, chicken adobo, um, and then they have this, uh, they have this dessert, turon and uh, ube ice cream. Again, turon being the yeah. fried uh, banana, uh, uh-huh. and, you know, in that, in that wrapper. Like, like Did it have anything else or is just the banana? Uh, no, I mean, it's the turon, right? So it's yeah. in the... Well, I mean, some, like there's jackfruit in some... And well, it's just the yeah. You're in this case, just banana. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, that's and good it, ones. Yes. So okay. I mean, it was it was uh yeah it was quite good. So there were others um other vendors there and uh but I um as usual I overdid it so I. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, according to their Instagram, they're going to be doing another one, huh? Well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it went quite well. So hopefully they, you know have enough momentum to kind of do it again. So that'd be good. That'd be good. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's in, uh, the last, I don't know, few weeks or something, you know, that's, mm-hmm. uh, that's a lot of food. Yeah. You hit, you hit yeah. all your food groups. Yep. I think so. Just hit all the food groups and get one of each and just, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Expanding. You got, you added some sandwiches in there. Well, a burger is a sandwich, so. Ah, uh, wait, that might be up for debate. <laughs> it's not up for debate. That is not a debate. <laughs> oh man, um, we'll put it out there to uh, to the audience to see. Do you think a sandwich is a burger? Um, no, that was fine. It's the taco question. That's the that's the, the well, questionable no. one. Actually, no, the questionable one is a hot dog a sandwich. <laughs> that one, thank you. A hot right. dog, yeah, right. right. No, it's a hot dog a taco. I uh, no. What? <laughs> what? It's a folded I th- piece of bread. I think there are two sides inside. to this now. Yes. Well, I think we can we can try to answer both questions. Uh, the debate of a taco as a uh, a hot dog as a taco or a sandwich. It's a uh, taco because it's a sandwich is two pieces of bread. So therefore, uh-huh. but it, the uh, bread uh, in this case, like it is two pieces of bread. They just happen to be like slightly joined, like at the seam, right? It's like it just they're not separated. Is, you know, like, is a pita a sandwich? You know, it's like one no, piece of... No, it's a taco. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's one piece of... It's a one piece of uh, starchy delivery method to your mouth. This is a very interesting um, debate, I guess. I <laughs> I think we need to bring in more uh, panel members or something. Oh, yeah, there's got to be a round table <laughs> more for pund- sure. More pundits uh, to discuss... <laughs> Yes, the deep philo- philosophical questions of um, really what is a sandwich or not, you know, or a taco or whatever other kind of category. Um, I don't know. I don't think a burger is a sandwich, um, but uh, is or may- what? maybe it's the other way around. It's like maybe maybe burgers are sandwiches, but sandwiches are not burgers, right? I mean that I can accept. That. I think that logic would follow. It's right? like a. A square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is right. not a square. Yeah. All yeah. right, fine. Fair. I and in this, this case, burgers are round, so it's fine. It's... Uh... <laughs> also, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a... You, Unless... You, know, you don't have round sandwiches? But here's the... cut the... Uh, cut the yes, crust that's right. Crust exactly. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, but here's the quite Here's the part of it on burgers. What about patty melts, right? Um, patty melts, Sand. that would make it a sandwich, right? By def, I mean, because of the bread, but then it's bread. Yeah. Burgers are bread. <laughs> Burgers exactly. Are bread. They're all, they're all the same. Oh man, this is so confusing. Um, <laughs> just give me a burger now. I just, uh, need to, I'll give you I, one of each. I uh, thank you. Need to spend some deep thought, um, in this deep question. Deep thought. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are lots of questions, uh, from the universe, you know, what is it, what is the meaning of life? You know, why are we here? And, you know, what is a sandwich? You know, that... <laughs> many, many yeah. questions. So, well, just, I mean, that's easily answered, right? Just go to Earl of Sandwich and see what they say. I guess so. They might be the authority on what that is. But I don't know if you'll see a burger on that menu. So. Mm. They're wrong. All right. Well, <laughs> 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 moving on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, that's the roundup of... uh of the last, uh, I don't know, whatever time period that was. But um, speaking of more food, I um, want to thank you again 
as we continue to talk about our food adventures, these local spots and pop-ups and things in between that have good food and, and good people as well. Um, there is some news and some follow-up here. Um, some errata on my side. Uh, of course. Not, well, yeah, of course. I mean, that is the dumb and hungry. <laughs> Wouldn't be uh, dumb without it. Um, from a previous episode, I can't remember which one exactly. Uh, when we first... Probably when he first mentioned the standing room in Redondo, um, I just forgotten to shout out um, my buddy Jose. And for some reason, uh, there are so many other places I, I would have wanted to shout him out at. I just slipped my mind. Uh, it's thanks to Jose that you know we met at Ferns, so we we got uh, became real good buddies from from uh, from Ferns and his barbecue. He's the one who introduced to uh, to Galtong. Um, so you oh. can, you can thank him for that. Um, so, and yeah, he's always looking for, you know, nice, uh, low, you know, good spots, low key spots, just mm-hmm. places that he comes across and we wants to try. Um, Jose, if you're hearing this, uh, we are gonna, I'm gonna hit you up soon. I know there's a few spots that you have in mind that we need to try. So hopefully we will, we will do that. Um, as far as other news goes, we have, um, a opening of a new kind of food court um, at a mall all the way in the West Valley. So this uh, kind of complex called Topanga Social uh, opened, I don't know, last week. So the week, I think May 11th or so, something like that. Um, there's like a soft opening. I don't know. But but it's a huge food court and expansion at uh, the Westfield Mall. And, um, the, the thing is that I think it is actually quite ambitious because we have a lot of heavy hitters and players, um, that are appearing, uh, at this or featured at this, uh, this place. Let me see if I can, uh, switch over. Nope. Apparently I forgot to do well, that's darkness. <laughs> Don't worry. I can fix that, but they've got a lot of, um, I got a lot of different um, restaurants that they are featuring here, including um, Amboy. I mean, I'm just looking at this oh, list, wow. and you look at me here. Look with me here. I mean, a lot of places that we will recognize. We have Amboy. Um, D-Town Pizza is another kind of Detroit-style pizza that I told John about, and hopefully he'll try that. You can see Fat mm. Sal's is here. You wow. Mean, I mean, Barada House is also familiar. Bar- oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. Uh, Barada House is there. Um I love micheladas. You've seen them at uh, Smorgasburg. Um, uh-huh. They're always at that beer garden kind of space. Um, mm-hmm. That's actually, I think, either founded or like owned something by the um, by the gal who runs uh, Gelagetza, which is a Oaxacan restaurant oh, in K Town. Yeah, it's delicious. Yeah, so perfect. So they they've got um, they're out there serving up micheladas. Hey, hey, is familiar. Hey, is familiar. That's uh, what is that? Yeah, that's uh, like milk t- teas and stuff yeah, and boba. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a boba place. Okay, good. Jaybirds, you know, I think Jaybirds was out in Long Beach at one point, and I don't think they're there anymore. But that name is familiar, so they're definitely out here now. And uh, yeah, the name is definitely familiar. Okay, you know, it's a hot chicken spot. You know, so mm-hmm. um, so they made their space there. Katsu Sando uh, is a great, sp- great spot. Um, they're in Chinatown. They recently opened a spot in the SGV, and now they're out here. You know, mm-hmm. um, Mad Lab is another spot that I've um, had the chance to visit. They're out in Hollywood. They just make um, they make good coffee. Um, mm-hmm. My, uh, you know, fellow food buddy uh, Jeff Mayo um, knows the guys there. He's like, you know. He swears by him and everything. So oh, nice. um, hopefully I'd stop by there. Um, what else? Mini Kebab. That's out in Glendale. And um, they are um, definitely probably one of my favorite um, kind of, um, you know, kebab spots, uh, that kind of food. Um, Mediterranean? They, really? They, they are a small hole in the wall. Like literally the in, in Glendale, their Glendale space, it's like, barely have like two maybe three tables at most uh, okay. um and it's just this sweet team like this um um mother and father you know kind of team like and then their son kind of helping them out and also doing a lot of cooking but 
Um, mm. I wonder what this space is going to look like. I mean, I doubt that the parents are going to be driving out there or doing something, but I, I hope that a lot of the techniques and, and food that's served will carry over well to this new space. Um, what else? Um, Primo's Donuts is a great spot in, um, in the west side. Uh, they, uh, they're particularly uh, known for a great buttermilk um, bar, you know, donut. Oh. Um, so, but they, their whole selection is pretty stellar. Um, a few more here. Shrimp Daddy from Smorgasburg. Of course. And they're opening up there. So that's good. That's great for them. Good, um, you know, uh, what is that? Like the garlic shrimp with the pineapple. Pineapple bowl. Uh, right. Yeah, exactly. Um, slab, right? I mean, yeah, slab, well. slab is a good favorite. Yeah, finding their way there. But, you know, they originally were supposed to open up somewhere in uh, Pasadena. I think um, oh, they're, they're next to or near, you know, where Holland had opened. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not sure what happened to that, but clearly um, they've made waves out here. So they'll be uh, nice. be out there. So um, Tale of the Pup is, uh, I hadn't been there, but it's gotten this kind of, you know, kind of uh, um, popularity, I think, recently. They, out in West Hollywood, and they kind of did a recent kind of revamp of that space. They kind of rebuilt their restaurant. The building's actually the shape of a hot dog or whatever. And, um, uh, I don't know. I think following that, they, they added a spot here. Um, like the wiener mobile. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, day. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and then wanderlust, right? I mean, we, uh, we love our wanderlust and, um, it's good to know that they have so uh, basically a lot of what got big at smorgasbord that wanted to move out to there, there are a good amount of things too yeah you're right i mean a lot of good spots out there and um but yeah a lot of heavy hitters that are going to grace this space and people are going to yeah. be able to uh to try out so obviously like for i mean either you or me or whatever i mean like a lot of these places are accessible um within a stone's throw like we could just drive there relatively mm-hmm. easily but obviously this is in a location like all the way uh, in the West Valley, right? So it's um, it's very far, you know, from anything, uh, anywhere that we are at least. Yeah. Um, you know, it borders, it literally borders like Woodland Hills, like Thousand Oaks, that, that kind of area. So, I mean, um, with this being, you know, LA and then this is LA, I mean, but very West, um, maybe, it's, uh... it, it may not be worth maybe going uh, maybe for us, but like, it's obviously worth for people that live out here in the Valley and pretty far out, um, to go out here and try all these different things that are otherwise scattered throughout, um, you know, the city. Right. Yeah. Um, so when is that open? It already opened like oh, since it already last, did. Since oh, last wow. week. So I think some places might still be closed or like mm-hmm. maybe still ramping up like their offerings and stuff. Yeah. But okay. you can definitely go there now. Yeah. Um, and visit. Um, and cool. I also understand that there's like kiosks now that you can order from, like you can order at these kiosks over there and you can order from like multiple spots, uh, oh, nice. at the same time and like get your yeah, food. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. And, yeah. And those I, are cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for those that live in the vicinity, I think they also do or will offer uh, delivery or something. So, Oh, interesting. Yeah. Pretty convenient too from a mall, right? This is the Westfield yeah. mall. <laughs> um, but that's, that's pretty cool. I think. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, there's more to come and I don't know, maybe we'll find our way over there. Um, uh, it's, it would be worth it. I guess if like you want to visit all these spots and have a convenient place to try them all at the same time. Right. But, you know, on the other hand, we are fortunate to be in the locality of many of these places already that are relatively easy to access. So, but hey, that's, um, that's uh, Topanga Social um, out in, um, in Topanga. So um, that's it for me. But it sounds like you got something else uh, in your mind that you want to share. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. There's just more follow up for Yellow House for mm-hmm. your friends who went there and it closed down not mm-hmm. too long after. Yeah. Um, it's been taken over already by another restaurant. Uh, it's actually blue now, so it's not, can't even call it Yellow House anymore. Is that but right? It's, 
Yeah, it's it's straight blue. It's called An- Anju House now. A N J U. Wow, Anju House. Yeah, I was That's... there last Friday. Oh, really? Um, you've, you've, okay. All right. And uh, how was it? It's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. We had to go because Oli's favorite things, Yellow House. So when she found out something took over, it was time. They have uh, some of the same menu items okay. as Yellow House, and it's about the same. So the thought is that it's some a friend, a family friend, or someone that took over. Yeah. Kind of. Interesting. Um, oh, they already have pictures. Nice. Yes. It so, basically looks about the same, but it's more open. Than it okay. Was. Okay. But yeah, Did, instead of that yellow house, you see this big ass blue wall. Yeah, right here. yeah. Not the sky. Um, right, right. I know it's confusing. <laughs> like, that's a big house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. It's a blue house now. Uh, some of the other menu items have changed. There's some mm. some new stuff. A lot more like the Anju or something. Like on their menu, they say mm-hmm. it's like food that's going to be paired with alcohol or whatever. Really? Did they so serve alcohol before? No, they never did. Oh. And they still don't. Oh, okay. We don't know if it's too new. They're still trying to get a liquor license. Okay. Um, but currently, it's got, they don't have alcohol. So, can you uh, tell the me? The name is kind of, of weird. Where does the name come from? Do you know? Korean. It's Korean. It, oh. Anju's food that's like bar food kind of stuff. Oh, is it? Okay. So maybe that's their so. focus now. Maybe they're, yeah, maybe they're shifting their focus, I guess, and kind of off. It could be. If you scroll down, there's actually the, a picture of the menu on the left. Oh, interesting. Uh, oh, yeah, look, what, what is Anju? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just answered the question there. Um, okay, yeah. that that's it's pretty still, interesting. It's still currently a paper menu, uh, so yeah. like not even laminated. But that um, only got the, of course, she got the kimchi bacon pasta. That's what mm. the oh, still that's what it. she loved at, at Yellow House. Yeah, they do still have that. Uh, and then there's also some other pasta. I forgot what it was called, like a garlic something that she mm-hmm. got that she liked it from Yellow House. So, yeah. Mushroom. Uh, it's, a, it's a miso mushroom That's pasta. That's a real follow-up right there. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she, she liked it at Yellow House, and it was pretty good still here. So, you know, that's good. Um, there was, they have more, like, I, 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 don't, I don't know about to say hit, hipster, but yeah, like, shareable stuff, I guess, where, mm. like, corn cheese is on the menu now. It's got more fry options. Hold on. What? Shareable tapas. Yeah, sure. Mm. That Korean okay. Cheryl Tapas or whatever. Yeah, I heard that. Um, well, yeah. Rem- what else? That's good. I mean, it reminds me, as far as Cheryl, that kind of thing. You know, there's. Uh, mm-hmm. What'd you say? Oh, uh, she's just re- telling me what I ordered. But go ahead. We no, um, like uh, if you've ever been to Quarters, um, Korean barbecue. Oh, yeah. Um, you know. It, it's kind of that same idea, you know, it's a, it is a trendier spot, you know, um, a little more lively, shareable items, things like mm. that. Um, but, uh, it's good to see that they keep, they've kept some of the, you know, the, the favorites, I guess. Um, yeah. Like they still have the sweet potato latte on there. Mm-hmm. Wow. Which was, yeah. So that's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, she she mentioned the the big order that I had was the asado plate. I guess okay. it's like a giant beef plate. Basically, Whoa. it's just yeah. If you can if you can see it, it's two beef ribs and then yeah, and then meat cooked just like that. I don't know. I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it's just a lot of meat. You know, it is. And then you got some huge. little decoration there you can do with that. Um, yeah, you just throw it on the floor and that's right. <laughs> let's get it out of the way. That's right. No, but it, was, um, it was really good, though. It was really good. That's great. That's great to hear. And good to know that, um, you know, the restaurant is still there and um, it'll, yeah. you know, continue on. So, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully. To my friends uh, that we were referring to, um, my good friends. His only real, <laughs> his, his real friends, yeah. Uh, there you go. Now you can... Um, you can relive the memories. Um, so good deal. Anju house. Okay. Well, thank you for that. That's uh that's a good reporting. <laughs> good yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you know if they have the same hours though? Like, cause I'm looking here, it's like five to 11. Were they always kind of a, yeah. I thought they had like, no, it used to be like a lunch as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like it used to open at 11 AM yeah. and close at 9 PM. 
mm-hmm. but now it's oh well. I guess so there you go dinner. yeah again like it's really focusing on this kind of late night kind of scene they're they're like yeah. open um well, except they might you know, expand depending it's like it opened maybe two weeks ago i think it was like a soft opening when we went last week mm-hmm. so who, you know, who knows for sure mm. nice yeah yeah because like back in the day yellow house used to be open to like late yeah but oh yeah pandemic times that's right that's right so, well maybe they'll get there but it sounds yeah. like a good start so far so thank you for for that and glad you got to uh glad you get to try it so good deal um cool so yeah just you know it's it's places like these that we just kind of like talking about and hearing about and seeing where they go and hopefully they you know they continue on so this is a great kind of example of that and then like places like the topanga social that highlight um uh, great restaurants restaurants that may have um you know had uh, a small community at first and then it just continue to grow and uh, gain recognition and uh expand and yeah just kind of kind of get into the scene there and it's uh it's always nice to see the stories that kind of develop um in in good ways for these guys and uh hopefully it continues so um very cool very cool um today as we continue to again talk about more food um we have kind of a two for one special of our food groups here um we've talked not almost uh, endlessly about uh, burgers so far but we're going to bring them up one more time <laughs> and um uh but in addition to the burgers we're also going to bring uh bring in another food group um, call, uh, of tortas. And, uh, we'll get to that, um, very soon, but today's episode, we're covering two, um, pop-ups that, um, I've wanted to, been looking forward to talk about for a while. Um, the first is hamburgers nice. And, uh, after that, we'll be talking about tortas el aguila. So hamburgers nice and tortas el aguila kind of go hand in hand because I feel like, um, I wouldn't have, you know, found out one without, you know, uh, trying the other. Um, so they kind of go hand in hand for me. So um, Hamburgers Nice is a great um, spot uh, for smash burgers. If um, you are just, if you can make the drive down, you know, to Long Beach or kind of any uh, adjacent area. But um, the who behind Hamburgers Nice is Mr. Uh, Jairo uh, Bogarin, and he um, he's basically what you would call like the example if someone if nice if nice were a person that would be Jairo. He's just a really cool guy, real um, just real friendly, just easy to talk to. He's always someone very interesting and always kind of very interested in what you're up to. Um, I it's always at this point where starting to get to this point where I'm starting to lose track of how I find out about these places. Um, I don't remember if it was from word of mouth or something I had read or whatever, but, um, I'm glad that I met Jairo and, and know him and he, um, he's a really, he's a real cool guy. Um, he was formerly of, um, Monkish Brewery, uh, well-known, uh, brewery in, uh, in the South Bay. And, uh, I say formally, I'm not sure. Maybe he still has ties there, still doing stuff there. But uh, I know he's focusing uh, everything on Hamburgers Nice. Um, but as far as the what, as you can see here, he's uh, making smash burgers. He really kind of came onto the scene with this kind of signature breakfast burger. Um, as you can see, it's, uh, it is a burger. So it's got hamburger meat. You got che- your cheese on there, your fried egg. And you can see a little bit of the uh, of jelly. I um, don't know if you ever grew up with, you know, eating the McDonald's breakfast plate. Of course. Like the deluxe yes. breakfast plate or something. You know, you've got, of course, you got the egg, the sausage, the bacon, um, the, uh, the the muffin, right? But I don't know if you've ever uh, built the sandwich. You know, you have the, and then you, you take the muffin and then you use it. place all the yeah. ingredients there. And then you also, you know, you've, you have the, uh, the syrup, but then you also have the jelly in there. And, um, you know, I think the inclusion of the jelly is, uh, kind of integral to the nostalgia, I think key to, uh, uh an item like this, because I think that's where this is drawn from, you know, as far as like the inspiration. Okay. Um, so, 
um, yeah, the kind of that, that jam is, uh, is very cool. So, um, that's the breakfast burger. And then over time, you know, he's added, um, other kinds of items, you know, like a kind of a more standard lunch burger, um, Mm -hmm. maybe a chorizo kind of burger, um, a Western burger, you know, with bacon and and, of uh, course onion ring, onion rings. Hell yeah. I'm a sucker for that kind of burger. You know, I, um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always enjoy, um, you know, good, you know, the days of Carl's jr, uh, the Western bacon. So seeing an offering like that, um, makes me very happy. (laughs) So, um, but yeah, hamburgers for breakfast is, uh, definitely something, um, worth, uh, looking at just, um, just looking at the same article again, you know, just have a nice shot here from in the article of like some of those burgers that we just talked about. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, he's made a real good, um, you know, burger from, from his time from doing this. And, um, you know, he's also done, uh, collabs, like collaborations with other pop-ups or other chefs, you know, uh, places like Ace Barbecue, which we talked about before, um, some other pop-ups like Pogisilog, um, even, um, uh, this spot called Gorilla Tacos out in the arts district from uh, chef Wes Avila. It's a very well-known kind of spot. And, um, I've, yeah, I've seen some stuff that they've put out there together and it looks, uh, looks really good. Um, so, I mean, Hiro seems to be, you know, uh, not just, uh, good on his own. He seems to be a great person, you know, to work with and, and to co- collab with. So, um, that's, uh, make a really a, a good name for himself. Um, he started, I mean, I, I started at least, uh, trying him out, out, uh, he had some stuff in LA, some pop-ups there, but I think these days he's pretty much down here in, um, in Long Beach. So, um, You'll find him uh, making these burgers in Long Beach, and we'll talk about some of the places that um, I visited and where, and um, and some of the places that he is at even now. So, um, like I said, I've kind of lost track of how I've started to find out about some of these places. But as far as um, these pop ups that I've been, this is probably one of the first visits I had. It's out in um, downtown at. Um, Think of that arts district area um, at this small kind of uh, spot called El Cafe by Primera Taza, which is uh, actually a coffee uh, shop. Um, the guy that uh, runs that spot, um, I think, goes by the nickname of Chewy, and uh, he he makes like a, he just makes a real good um, like kind of that pour over type style coffee. I think he gets his. Um, you know, his beans and everything from, um, from Mexico, some well-known, um, products there. And he just brews a real good, um, pour over. Um, but, and yeah, he would invite, you know, maybe a couple of these pop-ups to set up there. And, um, this was one of the first, so you can see here, you have, uh, the breakfast burger, you know, with the fried egg, with the runny yolk, you know, just, um, with the meat and cheese, just a good, um, good offering of, uh, of the burger. So this was, um, this was a good start. I mean, I was very, uh, it's, it's hard not to, um, it's easy to please. Let's put it that way for me to eat a good burger like this. So, um, I, I really enjoyed that bite. Uh, I have at least a couple pictures here. Mr. Hiro himself, you can see he's, uh, smashing the burger there in the flat top. You got some small pans here for the fried egg. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was, I think it was him and maybe like one other person just like kind of, uh, prepping the, the buns and stuff, but you can see that thin smash on there, right. For a nice quick, um, you know, cook for a smash burger. Um, and yeah, that was, um, that was one of the first kind of forays into, um, for hamburgers. Nice. So I know that I knew that that wasn't going to be the the last, uh, visit. So, and it wasn't because I think shortly after, uh, they popped up there again. And so I had revisited once again. Um, so just more of the burger. Mm-hmm. I also, uh, as I, as I'm looking at this, I also just wanted to, I'm reminded, um, uh, of, um, my buddy chef Mayo and, um, 
uh, how I, I think I had met him initially through this pop-up. Um, if that's not right, then that's, that's what it is now. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, Chef Mayo, he, uh, he's the chef that's not a chef and he, uh, is always finding the late, you know, the, the low key spots that are, are like kind of the up and coming, um, next best thing. And, um, this was certainly one of them, so I was glad to to have met him and um, just kind of hang out with him and and um, and try out all this good food with him as well. So, um, but that was another you know pop up there. Um, this next uh, visit here was down in Long Beach, and you can tell here, my child, that this was during pandemic, and because um, this is pre your blanket though. This is pre blanket pandemic i guess um we had to use a kind of a i don't know like a moving to, blanket we had to make do with what we had you know it was a tough time for everyone so um <laughs> oh, yeah yeah that's that's why it was exactly but uh it was over at this spot called commodity which is now called good time which we'll get to later but um commodity in long beach it's a coffee shop um which is kind of transformed to you know, something, something more, but, um, they primarily serve good coffee and beer and things like that. Um, but we bought, uh, pre-ordered some, um, some burgers from there. I think this one might've been a Western cause of the, uh, the bacon in there and the spicy barbecue sauce that's lathered on there too. Um, this one must've been, this is a breakfast burger cause you've got the fried egg and the jelly and, um, on that too. And I'm trying to see what else it ordered. Oh, this is, I want to say this is a lunch burger. So lunch burger is, you know, um, it's, uh, I think it's got like kind of the onions there and some jalapeno, I believe some mm. pickled jalapeno there. So it's got some tanginess oh, and some pickled. spiciness in there. I want to say it is. Nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, I remember I, I think I had pre-ordered, right? And, uh, I took, I took it to the car and then I just ate everything from the back of the car in one sitting. I mean, it was okay. just very good either that and, or I was just very gluttonous, but it was good. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, look, they're smash burgers, right? They're small. I mean, how, how many could you possibly like, could you possibly just be full with one? I don't think so. So. Uh, huh. <laughs> one of each <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 and uh and the coffee's not bad either so it's a good good offering there um yeah i think there this was another let's see this was another visit but this was at i'm trying to i'm trying to remember now oh this was out in east la so this visit here was um at Milpa Grill. So Milpa Grill is out in uh, East LA on Boyle Heights, and um, they would occasion they there was a period of time when they would occasionally invite other like vendors and pop ups to cook out of their kitchen. Milpa Grill make you know has their own menu of food that they serve out, but then um, again they they invited these other to kind of take over the kitchen and and um, and do stuff there. So hamburgers nice had a few, um, you know, had a stint there, and so uh, this was a lunch burger, um, and the coffee there was uh, uh, courtesy of Cafe Cafe, which operates inside um, the Milk of a Girl space. So um, that was a uh, that was a that was a good um, that was a good one. I mean, I I guess looking at this, I didn't have the the breakfast burger, um, for that visit, but it's not a, not a big problem. Um, this was, this is kind of more the action, I guess, of what I was talking about. So this is inside, you know, Milpa grill and, uh, actually the guy that's there, um, kind of in the forefront, uh, with the red hat, that's actually, um, like Chewy from what we talked about earlier from oh. El Cafe. So he mm -hmm. had come out and he was helping, um, make some of the coffee and other drinks there. Um, but yeah, they, uh, um, that's kind of the rest of the crew there in the, in the, in the kitchen. Um, and this one definitely had a breakfast burger in there. So, um, I don't remember, 
did I just have one? Wow, no, I, I think I had multiple. I had to have. There's no other way. Uh, any other way would be unacceptable. Um, this is technically, I think, what they call a salad burger um, because of the vegetables. Uh, this is kind of <laughs> your standard uh, kind of roadside uh, burger stand type burger. Um, so, so that's the salad burger, the breakfast burger. Uh, I think those were the two main ones. I don't remember if I had anything else, but yeah, that's, um, it's another shot of the breakfast burger. Oh no, there's a, there's a Western burger in there. Look at that. <laughs> nice. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, you can't let that opportunity go to waste when it's there. You got to get it. Yeah, it's exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's at, um, that's a milk. Milpa Grill, um, from their their time there, so yeah, that's that, that was pretty good. Uh, now we're back here at um, Commodity um, in Long Beach. Uh, another great shot of the of the breakfast burger. Um, while I am looking at these, I want to shout out a few people. So, in addition to you know knowing Hiro, when I um, couple other people I wanted to remember um is uh, his cousin Ben um and uh another cousin Amy and I mentioned them because in addition to them being like real nice people um I know both of them from my um my previous job um because uh um, Ben went to school um over there and uh, uh Amy uh, works over there as well. So, um, so there's like this kind of interesting, you know, kind of connection, this small world that gets smaller. So, um, <clears throat> when I was at, uh, commodity, I, uh, ran into, um, Ben. And so we got to kind of catch up and kind of talk and, um, yeah, kind of see what's going on and have a nice kind of share a nice, uh, time and nice meal together. So, um, yeah, but, uh, this was a good shot of, uh, of the breakfast burger at, uh, at commodity. I've also apparently run into Mark Tripp there. So, um, Tripp Burgers. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, nice. um, that was a good visit. The universe again, continues to get smaller as I continue to get larger. Um, another visit at commodity, just more, um, Get more of the breakfast burgers in there, um, but just kind of contrasted here with this funky background thing, whatever. But um, yeah, uh, again, just more good stuff. I think we definitely see more of him at Hyro and and this operation at um, uh, in Long Beach more regularly. And again, these days you definitely will see him there. This one is the picture of the chorizo burger. And the chorizo again has, yeah, the chorizo and the, it's like a breakfast burger. It's got the fried egg and pickled, uh, vegetable, you know, like carrots in there and whatever. Um, it's a little spicy on the spicier side. Oh. Um, you know, but it's, uh, it's a real nice, it's a real nice, um, real nice bite there. So, um, here's my, so again, going back to what we were asking is, um, is this a sandwich or a burger or both? I mean, I'm not. Still not quite sure both. where the lines are. Hundred percent both. That's a a sandwich and a burger. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good to know. Um, and then this this one here. This is actually from a visit um, at Sarah's Market in uh, in East LA, like in the city ter- city terrace area. And I had visited here. I'd taken uh, Maria and Patrick when they were out here uh, visiting, and. Um, uh, as we were picking up food, you know, for lunch or whatever, you know, I had to stop by here to, you know, um, have them visit and try it out. So you can tell, um, you know, to coerce Maria <laughs> to kind of do a little hand modeling and whatever. And, um, Oh, I thought that things. was you. She just did your nails. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know how I, uh, I do my nails regularly and do them all nice <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. Um, but she was a uh, nice to, uh, um, I don't know, indulge and, um, Play along, I guess. But um, yeah, that was uh, there's you know Hiro and you know his crew over there. But yeah, that's um, Sarah's Market is a great place. Another great example of um, 
you know, uh, the community kind of reaching out and, and bringing community together, they would invite uh, different pop-ups and things uh, to set up throughout the week. And um, they would feature them and, you know, kind of give them highlight. I think it got to a point, you know, where uh, they were getting very popular to the point where I think, you know, uh, like county health was getting notified and um, they were coming out and, you know, checking out that, op- you know, all that operation and stuff. And in some cases, like shutting them down because it was like getting pretty out of hand, I guess, or whatever, um, which is kind of crazy. But, um, you know, that's uh, that's the life of the pop up, I guess, you know. But um, um, but yeah, glad, glad to see them, um, you know, even out there in in the East L.A. area. So. Um, there are, yeah, I mean, there's so many other, uh, different, um, pop-ups and things that they've done, um, out in Long Beach, out in LA, there were just a few more picks, uh, that I, I have here that I wanted to share. This was from a relative, fairly recent, relatively recent visit. Um, this was now at uh, what is now known as good time, formerly commodity. Um, so in addition to a burger, I also um, had a a chopped cheese. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh with this dish. Chopped cheese is, I think, more of a New York thing. Um, mm-hmm. It's literally just like chopped up pamper meat on this, you know, uh, this bread roll. So is this a sandwich or a burger? I'm not <laughs> or is it a hot dog? Is that one piece of bread? <laughs> no, because okay. So again, about the hot dog, right? The hot dog, like, um. Isn't it? I think it's two pieces of bread. It's just like they're just joined at the seam, right? Okay. So that's one piece of bread. No, it's two pieces of bread that's if joined it's connected, at the seam. Mm-hmm. If, yeah, exactly. They're joined at the seam, so it's one thing. It's like it's like when in when you're make, typing up a a thing in Word, the word count doesn't increase unless there's a space bar, um, unless there's a space in between. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you, you don't so because there's no word. space between the bread. It's considered yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Again, th- this is the philosophy that uh, really, uh, I don't know, that we'll be talking about for generations to come. So, um, but regardless, the chopped cheese was very good. There needs to be more chopped cheese out here, I think. It's a pretty simple dish, but it's um, it can be pretty satisfying. I think there I is mean- a spot out um, maybe in, I want to say the Silver Lake area or something like that. I don't know. I, I, if I find the place, I'll I'll share it somewhere. I mean, it's kind of like a patty melt, huh? Maybe. I mean, Except but instead of frying the bread, you just right. I don't know. But then, how is this not like a like a hot submarine sandwich? You know, is it not? I, that's what I'm thinking it is. Or like, I I don't know. I don't know how you classify this. They just call it a chopped cheese, right? Just in general. Um, so I don't know if people care really, but. I just I just got to think about that because you got hamburger meat, right? So when you got hamburger meat, it it definitely qualifies it as a burger, right? Um, mm-hmm. But the fact that it's uh, well, one, it's chopped up, and it's on a non-standard bun, um, yeah, it kind of blurs yeah, yeah. many lines. So I'm not <laughs> quite sure. We'll have to do a little bit more research, I guess, or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, and then there's a shot of the, the the Western. Yeah, just good as ever. I mean, I can't can't go wrong. Nice. Um, so good times, good times with uh with nice burgers. So, um, yeah. So that's uh, that's hamburgers nice. Uh, again, primarily out in Long Beach by Mister Hiro. So if you have a chance, please um, try them out, visit them. I don't know. I, I mean, it's uh, wonderful. Uh, wonderful time that you'll have there. So uh, the next spot that I would like to talk about is um, uh, Tortas, Tortas El Aguila, Tortas Ahogadas El Aguila. That is our next uh, food group. So um, the who behind uh, behind that is um, the Lara, Lara family. And um, where's my article here? So this article kind of um, kind of shares a little bit about their background and everything. The uh, the father who uh, mm-hmm. you know who who would primarily make the chili and you know the sandwich and everything, 
Um, he's actually allergic to chilies, so naturally he would uh, make it. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's kind of a family recipe or whatever, just kind of running in the family for a long time. So there's a good feature um, from this article to check them out. But um, so that's um, so it's Mr. Miguel Lara and then his wife, uh, Irene. Um, and then he his one of his daughters, um, Natalie is um one that kind of helps out the most and really kind of like the face of the business um it's the one that you'll definitely see um you know uh there so that's yeah that's them that's natalie and uh and uh, her dad so um yeah they're they're they've made a name for themselves in making um tortas ahogadas so it's a spicy like this real spicy sandwich um it's the name Torta Salgadas is like a wet sandwich, okay? And it's like on a roll. And the the bread is a uh, birote salado, which is like this crusty and sourdough, bag, almost like baguette-like bread roll. So it's a bread that needs to be kind of, you know, I guess tough or, you know, kind of dense enough to, you know, be able to absorb the chili sauce that's poured on it. So the bread, of course, has like the filling, like in this case, like carnitas, or maybe in the, they serve it with mushroom or beans or something. But whatever's in there, regardless, like then you'll top it with this chili sauce, this like chili arbol, like really spicy chili sauce. So that's where the ahogada comes from on the torta. You know? So, um, yeah, so it's uh, super spicy, but it's uh, it's it's a nice it's satisfying. Like if you, if you enjoy that kind of thing and you kind of like can handle it, it's, um, it's, it is actually kind of satisfying to, uh, to deal with. So yeah, I don't know. What's your, what's your tolerance? I don't remember now. <laughs> can you deal? <laughs> oh, not really. I mean, what is it as the base, you know, yeah. howling since we've been there a lot of times, I think yeah. medium is a good spot. Okay. Yeah. So any you, but hot is too much, you know, so. Okay. Well, you know, with Howlin', you know, it's like, um, hot is, hot is hot. I mean, like, yeah. it's. Oh, yeah. You know, it'll, it, it'll, uh, it'll do something to you, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I think, um, here you, you can certainly, I think, temper the level of spice by how much, of course, how much chili is, you know, kind of given mm-hmm. on there. Um. But um, usually I like to try to push my limits and try to get like as hot as as I can. So they just like drench it. It's like drench the whole nice. container just with Ooh. almost like that chowder burger. You just drench it in clutch. <laughs> just hey. the burger in clutch out. Um, I'm into it. Yep. More for but, chowder than for hot sauce though. I gotcha. I gotcha. No, totally. Same idea though, you know, same spirit. Um, but this is one of the first pop-ups, you know, I visited. And the reason, again, we kind of put this together in this, with uh, the Hamburgers Nice folks is um, I'd heard about them because of Hyro. Um, and mm. he kind of told me when he was at Monkish, this is when he was at Monkish, like, hey, we've got this pop-up, you know, I want you guys to try these. And so, yeah, I mean, I had um, actually I went there and I met up with, um, with Chef Mayo. Um, we planned to... I don't remember if we had planned to go out there. Or we just happened to run into each other, but I know that we had we had met up there. So, um, you, their san, their menu is quite simple: either a grande or a chica, big, small, no problem. You have to get the grande, um, of course. So, but yeah, that's that's basically what a torta gada will, will more or less look like. You have again that sandwich roll, and then filled with whatever, um, in this case, carnitas, and then. Um, doused with the the chili sauce and then just topped with like just raw red onion and um and some lime so um that's kind of the that's kind of the spirit of like what what that sandwich is and you know from from then on like they would continue to pop up and again make a name for themselves to I don't know, did all these different places breweries and and all these things um in the LA area East LA um, even Long Beach from time to time. Um, I think these days I probably seeing them more just like kind of that East LA area. 
Um, but you know, just like with all these places you want to, um, you know, just check them out on Instagram and just see where they are popping up next. But yeah, this was like one of those first visits that we tried and yeah, it was, you could say deathly spicy, but it was, uh, it was very, <laughs> it was uh, quite good and, you know, endured it and, and everything. So that was, uh, that was, um, quite good. Um, Ooh, churros. Um, yeah, this is probably from my, oh, this was pandemic time. So they were doing pickups, you know, of, um, of their, um, from their pop-up. So you'd pick it up. I don't know. I think maybe at a brewery or something. Um, so this, this trio here, we have mushroom and carnitas and chicken. And then they provided like just containers of the, of the chili sauce and mm-hmm. then the onions as well. And then, the, yeah, I remember they threw in those, those churros as like, uh, it's a nice gesture. Um, but you'd probably need something sweet to kind of pare down the spiciness. So it probably does help. So, um, yeah, but this was, um, this is definitely something, this was pandemic time. So I had to take this home, enjoy it at home. Um, mm-hmm. which probably was good. Cause otherwise I try to, I would try to eat these all at the same time, um, <laughs> on the spot. And then die. Exactly. But there's the mushroom with the chili sauce on there, uh, with the red, with the onion. So, um, that, uh, that was a good, that was a good mix there. Um, but yeah, so that even during the pandemic, I mean, like that, that was the crazy part, right? Like a lot of these places, um, had to really think about how they were going to make it and survive and, um, but a lot of these places, including here, they they weathered weathered through, and they they probably doing thankfully they're doing a lot better. So, um, good. I'm happy Glad. for happy for places like like this. So, uh, this was just another pop up. Just uh, pick up the food. You know, I think this looks like chicken on there uh, with the spicy sauce and um, and every just kind of the standard fare. So. Um, yeah, that was a that was a good visit. This one was at man. This must have been at uh, Glendale Tap. I I don't remember why I kind of recognized this fence thing, but uh, it's blocking because you're a stalker, I guess. Well, yeah, maybe not blocking ninety percent of my view, but uh, yeah. I mean, this, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You just at Glendale Tap so often for pop ups, and they're it's always crazy, set up yeah. in the back. So mm-hmm. like, I'm sure. That's where you're looking. Yeah, a lot of these places. Yeah, it's going to be at a brewery or Glendale Tap. It's like, and they're like, "Oh, what do you like to drink there? Drink Uh, whatever they have. uh, (laughs) Whatever soft drinks they have at the pop up. Exactly right. Um, So this was uh, from them. Yeah, you could also tell because uh, they got those blue tables. Um, Mm -hmm. At least they did. Now this item that I'm showing here is actually a different item. This is a a lonche de chilaquiles. So lonche is basically a sandwich. Mm. And as you know, chilaquiles are, um, you know, fried uh, tortillas. Uh, and, uh, you know, in doused in a, in a sauce. Uh, they're not necessarily a spicy sandwich. It can be, but not necessarily. Um, but this is like finely chopped uh, tortilla um, and diced uh, onion to go with that. And then accompanied with a Porta Ogada. Um, so yeah, that uh that was the visit to Glendale. I think, yeah, so they started to kind of introduce, you know, this this lunch into the rotation. I think that recipe or you know, preparation comes from the mom. Um, so you know, she would um uh, she would make those. And you know, their daughter, Natalie, would, you know, uh, of course, as they need help, you know, to prepare, you know, she would learn on you know how to prepare these. So even if they're not available, she could actually probably do it um um for a pop-up or something so it's nice to kind of hand off knowledge you know and um tradition i think uh and things like these um yeah so that was uh the visit to yeah to glendale tap we've seen this setting before uh we were just there with hamburgers nice this is at milpa grill um they're you know just like I said, they're like invited to take over the kitchen, you know, to pop up, do their thing. And so uh, that's, um, 
that's what they're doing. So they are there. And in addition to taking over the kitchen, they also were very nice to provide some pretty cool uh, swag as well. They had this cool shirt that um, that they were um, that they had uh, very nicely uh, provided, and um, along with a uh, very delicious spicy uh, sandwich. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So just more of. Uh, of that torta. Yeah. You know, to be honest, I'm, I'm trying to look back and think back. Like, I guess I, I don't remember being, I don't remember really visiting or trying out this kind of sandwich too often. Um, if at all, until I started, you know, kind of trying these guys out. So Mm -hmm. again, in some ways it's like kind of nice to be exposed to these different types of foods. And then, um, you know, um, maybe you can look for other places, uh, makes you kind of inspire you to try other places or look for other places, uh, later on. Um, but this is kind of a good jumping point, I guess, you know, to get started. Um, yeah. So this, um, this next one here, actually this, this item, this non torta item comes from, um, Gusto bread, which we just talked about earlier, that bakery in, Mm -hmm. uh, in Long Beach. So, um, it seems like every so often, actually, they do pop up at Gusto Bread. Um, so, I mean, they're just doing their thing. But, you know, while people are there, they may want to pick up a pastry or a loaf of bread. Um, so they, um, yeah, it, it kind of becomes a nice um, pairing, I guess, uh, to go. So, yeah, uh, sometimes you will you will find them out there. And then um, I'd say my most recent visit um, was out in uh, Long Beach at Ambitious Ales, uh, which is also another spot that um, has become kind of well-known for rotating um, pop-ups and things through their space. A lot of good places that uh, we've talked about and seen have have probably been here maybe at least once. But um, this is... uh, yeah, this is um, at Ambitious Ales, so it had been a minute, I think, since I had um, since I had visited them since. But you know, the tortas were as good as ever. They were um, very spicy, very delicious, and um, they were just uh, very well done. So um, yeah, I think I just asked. Yeah, don't don't hold back. Just uh, make it as spicy as as possible. So um, yeah, there's uh, uh, Mr. Miguel. Uh, and then there's the, that's the mom, I think, Irene and Natalie's there in the, in the back. But, um, yeah, that's, uh, it's quite, it's quite a nice, um, it was a nice time. It's good to see. And then also they, uh, were nice to kind of prepare some, uh, chilaquilas. Um, uh, so a nice bowl of the, the salsa and then, you know, with the, Chilaquilas and uh, and the carnitas in there still uh, very spicy, uh, but all all the same very good. So um, yeah, many uh, many good things to um, to try, and uh, good to see that they are still you know doing their thing. So just like I said, many other um, many other ways to check them out, mostly through social media and on Instagram. That's usually how they post up, you know, their schedules and, um, where they're, where they'll be at. So just, um, make sure that you give these guys a visit, you know? Um, I know I realized my child again, like we're getting to this point where, um, you know, we're talking about places and pop-ups that maybe you haven't been able to visit with me. Um, but I won't, I won't stop uh, talking about them and can't shut up, but, uh, and just continue to tolerate, um, with my incessant, uh, you know, talking here. So, but, uh, thanks for that. Um, yeah, definitely. But hopefully, um, I don't know much. I, I hope we can get you out here, um, and try some of these places, um, sooner than, than later. Um, but who would have thought that, uh, you know, uh, a pair like burgers and tortas would make for a, um, a pretty good um, combo. But, um, <laughs> but you know, here they are, both um, 
excellent spots with great people and both worth a visit. So anyway, uh, we've come to the end of another episode. So thank you for joining us. Uh, We're excited to bring you more of our adventures with good food and good people. So reach out. We're here on Instagram. I'm at Dumb and Hungry, and he's at my underscore chow. You can reach us by email at hi at dumbandhungry.com, where you can send us your feedback and your love letters. Um, You can find us here uh, on YouTube where these videos are, and you can also find the audio wherever fine podcasts are served. But until next time, I'm Angelo. And I'm Angelo. And in your next food adventure, remember to try one of each.